Yo, what is up guys and welcome back to another episode of Slice of Shonen. I am your host, The Cloudy Crow, and today we'll be reacting to episode 13 of season 2 of ReZero. Now, I guess this is kind of a season finale, although not really, because season 2 still has many more episodes to come, but this is at least the end of the first half, and the second half is going to continue off, I believe in maybe like winter 2020, I'm not sure. All I know is that in fall 2020, we're not going to get any more episodes, so this is going to be the end for now at least. But anyways, in the last episode, we started off with Subaru just having uh, returned by death after being killed for the second time by the man-eating rabbits we know and love. And the episode started off pretty chill, and that was until Subaru went back to the trial and he had to face a new trial, the second one, which was the trial of present or something like that. And we know before he had to do the trial of his past, where he had to resolve his past, and we got to meet his parents. That was really cool. But this one was much darker, because he had to resolve his present, I guess. And the way that they tested him, I guess, was by taking him back to all of the previous timelines and showing him something very interesting, which was the fact that potentially... Even though Subaru might be able to, I guess, respawn after dying, there's a chance that the timeline that he leaves may continue to go on even though he's dead. And then we saw scenes where like Amelia was crying over him, even Biko was crying, and many others. I believe we saw like the majority, if not all of his deaths from season one and season two. And so hopefully through this, Subaru was able to learn that he can't just use his return by death all willy nilly, which I guess he hasn't really done it too much. There's only like a handful of times where he's intentionally killed himself and respawned but now I guess he should be aware of the fact that whenever he dies that timeline could keep going on and those people his friends that care about him will have to keep moving on after his death and they'll all have to go through the pain of having a person they really care about die in front of them in very brutal ways as we've seen throughout the season but in the middle of this trial he pretty much gets teleported over to the uh tea party that echidna hosts and this is where we find out the truth of why echidna's been so nice to us what she's really been plotting behind the scenes here and it started off with her giving a contract to Subaru, where she pretty much agrees to like help him accomplish his goals, and Subaru is pretty excited about this. But what he wasn't aware of is that whenever you sign a contract, there is a give and a take. And so he was gonna take Echidna's assistance, but what would he give? He didn't even question her. He was about to sign it before even asking her. That was until the other witches interfered and they showed that they really wanted to get their hands on him for the same reason that Echidna did because of his return by death. And if you think about it, this return by death ability is actually like insanely powerful because as Echidna explained, you can pretty much get like limitless knowledge from it. Like you could go into a timeline, uh, try something out, and if it fails, you could just jump into another timeline and not have to worry about the people that you may have killed or the damage you may have done because you can just start over from the beginning. And so Subaru luckily did not sign the contract and at the end of the episode, someone very interesting made a reappearance and that was the witch of envy so now we have all the witches lined up and Subaru all in the same room and I wonder like how she's gonna act around them because we know that the witch of envy killed all of the other witches and we can see that some of them were afraid of her I believe the witch of pride was actually excited to see her I don't know why but anyways I have no idea what's about to go down here the only question left is how things are about to go down so, if you guys are excited for the episode, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on the episode down below, and subscribe for more Slice Shonen content. But with that all out of the way, let's get right into this episode. Alright, so this is the part of the episode where you guys will have one of two different options. You can either choose the first option, which will be clicking the first link in the description, pulling that video up, and syncing it with me and the timer here, 
or you could choose the second option, which will be underneath that first link. There will be a second and third link where you can click those and pull up the full picture in picture to see everything all in one place. But whenever you guys are ready, we'll be starting episode 13 in three, two, one, go. Here she is. Castle of Dreams. She does not look happy. She wants you! Isn't it obvious, Subaru? Oh, man. He wants nothing to do with this. Dang. Oh man, Minerva. I love her name, by the way. That's such a cool name. Ooh, dang, she is preaching. Ooh, so that's how they really feel. He doesn't even know how important he is to her. She's got a point. Wow. She said, love yourself more. And she really does look so much like Amelia. Jeez. Subaru is also preaching right now. And this is how Subaru really feels. Man, we're really getting down to the root of the issue here. The Witch of Sloth. Oh, man. Dang, it looked like she was about to throw down right there.
You gave me everything. Jeez. Oh. Is he trying to wake up? What? What? Oh! Oh my god! He bit his own tongue off! And I believe, like... Oh! Wait, did he bite it off or... Cause that was a lot of blood. And I believe like, if you bite your tongue off or if you get your tongue cut off, it doesn't stop bleeding, right? Well, I guess not. What the heck could he have done? It's mom and dad. Wait, was that Julius? The one that said I wanted to call you friend? Julius Juculius? Man, that was Rem, right? And Amelia? Dang. Oh, this is where he restarted too, right? Hmm. Man. He's trying to find his purpose now. Oh my gosh. So did he not die after all? Maybe Minerva snapped him out of it? <laughs> True. Yeah, we're going to stomp out every single one of those rabbits, dude. We are getting rid of them. So she's the one that brought him back. The Witch of Lust. Dang. So she headbutted the life into that man. Wow.
see? This is why I don't think Echidna's really a bad person. I explained it why in the last episode, but... Oh, man. Dang. No contract, no gimmicks. Man, it takes a big man to say this. Oh, wow. It's going to be a rigorous path. Dang, the irony. <laughs> Break that spell. See, that's what I'm saying, man. Oh my gosh. Which of envy? All right. <gasps> what? Man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so it is true. She just confirmed it there. That those timelines do still go on. What? You must come to kill me. Whoa! Subaru! Dang! I didn't even think that was an alternative!
Man, but I guess that's what separates him from all the other, like, side characters in this anime. Dang. He said, nah, screw that. I'll find out a way to save you. Man. I think this thing deserves mad respect, man. They've come in clutch so many times. What is it called? A ground dragon? Dang. Otto's out here preaching too. This is an episode of wisdom right here. Man, it looks like his actions have transcended the language barrier between them. <laughs> oh man, he said it to him first this time. What is... Th what was that? I'm guessing it was some sort of barrier, but... Did he just throw up because of it? Oh, is that when Echidna touched him? Did she take it back? Oh... Well, maybe there's another reason for it. Let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe there's a reason why she took it. Roswell. Yeah, we remember this timeline. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's understandable. Dang. What? What the heck? Has he done that before? Is 
so he's telling him to do what's best for her instead of what she wants. Wow. Such an interesting way of looking at it. So is he saying, like, you should put saving over one over everyone's happiness, maybe? The book. Of course. The book. Ah, yes, that's why. What? And look at that look on his face. But why? So he sent those assassins there to kill them? But... I mean, there's more to it, obviously. Yep, yep, of course. He did it for Subaru. He had to put him in a dire situation. Dang. Wow. Enchanted by those eyes 400 years ago. That's a good question, actually. Dang, he can't even stand. This is so crazy, man. Oh, wow. Something he didn't account for. Wow. Dang. So he's literally puppeteering over here. Man, and Subaru was even brought to like begging to get him to like call off the assassins. It seems like him and a kid now have history too, 400 years ago. Yeah. Of course he doesn't hate you. He's trying to use you. Yep. You and Ram. I wonder what role Ram plays in all of this. He is horrified. Man. Man, that last look he gave him. That smile, man. Where is he going? To the mansion? Jeez.
What do you even do in Subaru's position, man? He's gonna have to keep going through this. Auto? Yo, always coming in clutch. What's up, man? Dang, it is morning. How did Otto know he was here? Maybe he saw him run off? True, I'm starting to wonder. I think there might be more to Otto than we think. Man, what does he have planned here? Oh! Oh my gosh! Hey, sometimes you need that friend that'll knock some sense into you. Oh! Yo, what? Holy crap! Okay, this cannot just be me. This cannot just be me. But, Otto, my respect for him is through the roof right now. Already, he's already proven himself. Back when Subaru got captured and he busted into the cell, took the locks off of him, and got him the heck out of there, he already won me over there. But now, like, oh my gosh! What a cool friend! What an awesome friend to have by your side, man. I wish I had one of those. <laughs> one that was as dedicated as Otto. Holy crap. He's done so much for Subaru. And I think out of everyone, he's the one person that's been there for him the most this season. Because holy crap. I mean, Amelia was there as well. And Ram. A bit. A bit. But mainly, dude... Otto has been there. Every time Subaru has been in trouble, every time it seemed like all hope is lost, Otto would come there. And for a moment when he first appeared, I was like, okay, is Otto like some sort of magical being? Is he like some sort of god or something? Not anything that crazy, but like, you know, something more than just this simple like traitor. But apparently not. He's just like a really awesome, observant friend that's there for Subaru whenever he needs him. And he was there to knock some sense into him. Man, that was so cool. That was so cool. And I think this, my biggest fear with the end of seasons, I guess this isn't really the end, but there's going to be a, like a delay until we get to the rest of it. My biggest fear is being left on a cliffhanger. And I guess this is kind of a cliffhanger, but at least we we weren't in the middle of anything. It's like a new beginning is on the rise. Uh, like reinvigoration of Subaru's like determination, or I guess hope is around the corner. And Otto was the one that brought him up there. So it seems like something big's about to happen next but we're not necessarily in the middle of something, so it doesn't feel like a crazy cliffhanger. But we have that, and then we have the whole witches situation, which way back in the beginning, way back in like episode, well, I don't know, it was one of the earlier episodes, I theorized that maybe the witches aren't as bad as they sound, like just because Echidna's the Witch of Greed or Minerva's the Witch of Wrath, just because they have these titles doesn't mean that they are terrible people. And we kind of got a sign of that in this episode. 
but in the last episode especially, I just want to clear it up one more time. Echidna, I don't, like, I really struggle with calling her a bad person. Yeah, she did some bad things, but she's the Witch of Greed, and I think it's pretty obvious that all of these witches are, like, somewhat, I guess, bound to the sin that they represent. So, um, Echidna, she's just helplessly greedy. And she can't even sympathize with other people because what's most important to her is her own needs and her own wants. So she doesn't care if she has to step on a couple of people to get to what she wants. But the reason why I can't say that she's a terrible person is because this is a dog eat dog world. And not everyone can make it. Not everyone can get what they want. So sometimes you're gonna have to pull some strings make deals with people, use people in some cases, and Echidna, she just knows how the game works. So I don't think of her as a bad person, I think of her more as like a ruthless businesswoman. That's how I see her. And then all of the other witches, I don't think they're bad either, and clearly we saw that. Um, they all like chipped in, in their own way, to help bring Subaru back, and somewhat give him hope again. So that's cool. Even though they have titles like the Witch of Wrath and the Witch of Lust, which sound bad. But I guess the most surprising one was the Witch of Envy, who, like, she was pretty much the biggest impression we got from her this whole season was her being madly in love with Subaru. But it seems like even now, the one thing that she wanted more than Subaru is for Subaru to be happy, is for him to love himself. And that was really cool for her to say. And on top of that, like, man, it seems you could tell 100% that she truly and genuinely cares about him. So seeing her like tear up right there. And then when Subaru helped her up and she told him that he might have to kill her. And then he said to her, he said like, nah, screw that. I'll find a way to save you. That was powerful. Because I think she was ready to accept the fact that he would have to kill her. That she'd have to die by his hand. But Subaru just said right then and there, like, right there he was the Subaru that we know and love. Like, once he said those words, I think we all know, like, 100%, no matter what, he is not going to kill her. He will find a way to save her, one way or another. So, this episode was fan freaking tastic Oh man, Roswell. Roswell, Roswell. So we found out that he's been pulling the strings behind everything. He's pretty much been puppeteering Subaru's environment in order to mold him into the Subaru that he wants him to be. The Subaru that can take him to the future that he wants. And one of those ways he uh, manipulated the environment is by hiring these assassins that would go and um, kill Rem and everyone else in the mansion. So I think what he wants from Subaru is for him to solve the trial and open the barrier around Sanctuary. But now he can't even enter the trial anymore because Echidna took that away from him, which he sees as like a bad thing. But I feel like there's a deeper reason why she took it from him. But now like he said like there's like you can't get what you want out of me i can't solve the trial even if i wanted to so please call off the assassins and he said no now there's an even bigger reason i'm gonna keep calling the assassins you're gonna have to keep looping through all of this going through all this pain all this torture until echidna gives it back to you and that was oh man that was a bit hard to swallow i'm not gonna lie to you but we're learning the truth now. We're seeing people's true intentions. So this was a fantastic episode, nonetheless. And I can't wait until it starts back up in, I believe, winter 2020. So make sure, if you are not already, to subscribe to the channel because we will definitely be heading up that. On top of that, fall 2020 is right around the corner. We have Higu... What is it? He Higurashi no Naku Koroni. It's like this horror anime I plan to react to. We have that, Don Machi Season 3, and Mahoka Coco Season 2 all dropping this week. So make sure you are subscribed so you know exactly when I post those videos. But with that, I am going to head out. 
Thank you all so much for checking out this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good one.